All right, guys, it's a new year. Before we jump into the scrappy video, I want to get together with my brother, Mark. We have a new year's resolution. We're really not, not that one. <laughs> we the all, bigger the better. <laughs> we all have that new year's resolution. That's not the one I'm talking about. This is one we're actually gonna to try to achieve. Yeah, that we're gonna work actually harder on. <laughs> all right, so what we want to do is there's so much that aviation has given to us. It's literally, our family and then aviation and then it's our aviation family and it has given so much to us we have so much love for aviation we want to bring more people into aviation and kind of help build and grow general aviation from grassroots up and you know what's amazing is what's been happening with these videos we started putting out and it it was just for fun i just filmed my, my iphone that he's holding right now I, I don't have time to do microphones we don't do much editing we just slam it together but for some reason, that way they people, actually get done. Yeah, that like way. If they get, you try to put a real production together, there would be no videos. <laughs> no, or, or I never build anything because we wouldn't make time. So I hope you can live with the bad sound quality and everything else. But the point I'm getting at is, our New Year's resolution is to find a way to give more back to aviation because it's given so much to the joy in our lives. So I want to share an example of one of the things that makes me happy. They're now coming in daily, both online in the mail. And I'll just give a quick example. This showed up today. I just want to say, Hunter, thank you for sending me a picture of you and your plane, your recent pilot license, the fact that you are now uh, an engineering student and, awesome. in, and in the ROTC and working on becoming an aircraft mechanic. And somehow the videos inspired Hunter in a way that he went out of his way to uh, do that and then write me a letter. So Hunter, thank you. And the hundreds of others. I, I can't even tell you, I could not believe the response. I love all you guys. Thank you for reaching out and sending things like this. It, we, it, it's amazing how many people reach out, like how often. Yeah. And that's kind of why we're doing what we're gonna do, Mike, this week and me next week. Uh, but all the people say, you've inspired us to get a pilot's license. And I have to look at it and go, there's a lot of great people out there doing YouTube. There's uh, YouTube stuff and videos. And they're, they're actually doing good stuff. I mean, they're like quality and not, not shot on an iPhone, but there's so many people that are bringing people into aviation and it's amazing how, how many people that is. We had an old guy land at this airport just a couple weeks ago and the airport manager called, he says, he says, Mark, there's a guy here at the fuel pump. He's parking this airplane. He really wants to meet you. I said, okay, so I go down to say hello. And as I'm walking up, he starts saying, you're Mark Payne. I'm like, wow, you can tell the difference. That's good. My mom can't tell the difference yet. <laughs> some, yeah, some people think we look alike. Some people are surprised we're brothers. <laughs> so he says, he says, you're Mark. I said, yeah. He says, I wanted to fly out here. It's my first ever solo cross country after getting my pilot's license. And it was a little surprising to me because I thought he was going to say something like you inspired me to start flying again because he looked a little older. I said, if you don't mind me asking, how old are you? And he says, I'm 74 and I just got my pilot's license because I've been watching your brother's videos and what you guys do online. And I was like, holy cow, 74. And he did it. He got out and got it done. And, <laughs> and it, was, it was really, um, it was inspiring to see that, that there was that kind of an impact. So Mike had an idea on how we can do more of that. All right. So what I want to do this year is focus on Mark and I and anyone else out there, we want to encourage people to focus on getting people into general aviation. So what I'm gonna do this, this time, I'll try and come up with things throughout the year, is I want to help get people introduced into aviation by the followers, I'm getting comments from so many of you that say, I'm not even into aviation, but I'm beginning into aviation, or I just like your carbon fiber or your engineering. Or I watched a monster truck video and I had some monster red airplane. <laughs> and Draco showed up. And now I've been watching your YouTube and I'm interested. Who, who would have thought that uh, monster truck and drag cars would start posting uh, Draco videos and then that end up um, following us? I don't, I don't get it, but I love it. So for those of you who aren't into aviation yet, I want to get you hooked. So. I'm just calling it out direct. I'm gonna try and, and, and hook you into it. And this is the way I'm gonna do it. If you're not a pilot, or you're just becoming a pilot, and you're interested in aviation, the first hundred of you that want to get magazines about flying, I'm gonna pay for a whole year's subscription. So this is what got me hooked. My father-in-law, shameless look at this. And they all got Draco, I can't help it. They're my favorite magazines. <laughs> um, if you like, are like me, 
I was at my father-in-law's before I had my pious license and he had magazines like these all over the place and I kept picking up and reading through them and I got hooked. And 20 years later, I'm here doing everything airplanes. So I wanna get you hooked by buying you a year subscription. There's nothing <laughs> to this. There's, no, there's nothing to do just the first hundred of you, let me buy your subscription. I don't care what magazine it is, this country, another country, any magazine that has to do with flying. I love so, it. Yeah? I love it, I think it's great. <laughs> and um, I'm gonna take a New Year's resolution challenge for Mike. He's, he says, Mark, you keep putting all these fun videos on Facebook and you don't, you don't put them on YouTube and then people keep asking where to find them and I apologize. I've got these videos buried deep in the dark archives of my Facebook page that you just can't scroll that far and find them. So I'm gonna start pulling them out of Facebook. I'm gonna start trying to post to YouTube and I'll start putting videos together and trying to give updates on Ambush and its progress and some of the things we're doing different with Ambush. Mark, Mark has some really fun videos that don't exist. You won't find them. So Mark's agreed to put them out. If you're into aviation, you got some cool videos, post them. Whether two people watch them or two million people watch them, Let's share aviation. So we have a challenge for all of you fellow pilots to get on the comments, tell us what you think we can do to grow general aviation, or possibly what others can do that might be reading the comments that can do to promote general aviation. This is a team thing. I mean, That's it's right. gonna take everybody. I, and we joke about how low budget our videos are, <laughs> iPhones and echoey rooms and no microphones, but- And dirty <laughs> shirts. Dirty, dirty <laughs> shirts, it's that scrappy dust. Uh, but, but people watch, and it doesn't matter if you inspire one person or 10 or 10,000, the best way to save GA is to grow GA. And GA, growing GA is easy. You just need to introduce them to this addiction. And it's an addiction, we all know it. But it's a healthy addiction and it can actually provide an income for a family or just fun escape from your busy life to get off the ground and, and yeah. relax, take a deep breath in the skies. So guys, Mark's gonna do something on an up and coming video to help flight schools. Flight schools, because they're the ones bringing people into aviation and teach them how to fly. So we got something special for you guys coming up soon. If you're a struggling flight school, Pay attention to the next video. Because we're yeah. gonna try to do and something. And one of the next couple of videos, because we kind of get out of order, but something's coming really cool for you, flight schools. Students, let's get you some magazines. All the rest of you, please, every one of you, I just ask that you write comments how we can do more ourselves to promote general aviation and what others can do. And let's all read them and share them and let's get aviation awesome. Thank you for your time. Let's get back to Scrappy. Yeah, and if you want to follow me on YouTube. It's Mark, 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 Mark Patey. Patey. Mike Patey. Mike Patey. Close enough. <laughs> it's Mark Patey over there. Mike Patey over there. <laughs> All right, guys. Have fun. Let's get back to work. It's physics, math, and engineering. Machine it, draft it, build it, test it, break it. Every time something new gets built, the entire world advances. Laying in bed at night, it's designing new parts, designing new suspension, designing new wings. The other project I want to tackle right now is the new shape of the top of the plane. So some scrap material I had out back, a big signpost, and uh, I'm going to arc some aluminum on it. And I'm going to build a mold for the top of the plane and the taller vertical as one giant part. So we're going to use every trick I have in the book to kind of blend all this together. That's my project. So. About to work. All right, guys, I'm gonna show you what we're doing next. I've just got the window mounted in. I'm using this to set it up in the hole because it locks in. That's my window placement. I'll take that in. The reason I need the window in now, I've put blue tape down. Fire, carbon fiber resin will stick to the blue, so uh, don't use that. It needs to be a uh, clear film. So I put blue tape to protect the window from the clear tape because it doesn't want to come off very well on top of the blue, so it's blue, then clear packing tape. Now why I've got this done is now I've got the window installed. When I build the carbon fiber mold, it's gonna come around and that's what I'm gonna use to trim out the window in carbon. It's the same piece that comes over and laps over the top of this carbon fiber. So that's what I'm doing, I'm gonna get the windows placed. Then, the way I'm gonna make this top 
You're gonna have to wish me luck. I don't know how well it's gonna work, but we're gonna try. I've got this pipe now installed to the top of my arc, and then I've laid out on the pipe, you can't see it, every couple inches. I've laid out marks, and also on a piece of tape on the inside here, and I've got this piece of aluminum that I've marked center, and the, the way this will work is I will line this up on the bar and I'm gonna bend it so it touches where I've made my blue lines, and I'll mark it on this plate, slide it up to the next two foot increment, arc it, mark it on the tape on the two sides, and every time I move it, I'm gonna make little black marks, and I'll mark it one foot, two foot, three foot, four foot, and those ticks will kind of move out on this plate. When I'm done, I can pull this off. I'll have gone all the way up to the top of the plane, including the transition where this angle turns. I'll have to do that one every inch. And I'll get a measurement pattern that I can then pull this off and input every width change with every distance change up the aircraft. When I'm done, I'm gonna be able to take one sheet of aluminum, use this template guide that has every inch mark and dimension width-wise and transfer it onto a single sheet. Then I'll lay it out and cut it. And I should be able to take one sheet of aluminum, even though this is constantly changing from one end to the other, from the size of the arc, the radius of the arc, and the width of the part, and get it onto a flat sheet by flattening that metal out and measuring it. When that's done, I'll cut that sheet out and hopefully, <laughs> but all goes well, I'll be able to put one sheet of aluminum, no seams, not have to do the body work from front to back. That will have this area done. The tail, we'll get into that later. It's gonna be another trick and then some work between the tail and the top because we're gonna make it all in one part. So that's the trick, I hope it works. Wish me luck. Back to work. Okay guys, so I think some of you might know and others might not that uh, I have a couple companies one of them I'm super excited about, and I'm gonna steal a quick second of your time and hope you guys go check out this new product. And it's called Grip Lock Ties. I have an amazing partner, Creighton King, who came up with the idea, and we uh, partnered up together, and we've been making molds, and it's been quite a challenge, but we just got a little mini display. And what Grip Lock Ties, if you haven't seen it yet, these are rubber lined zip ties. I can pull them out here. It's got a rubber lining on it. And so when you tighten it around a bar, wires, anything, it doesn't slide around and it's releasable. So when I slide this together, it's an extremely strong zip tie with rubber lining and a releasable pull tab. So I'm super excited about this product. We've got different sizes. This is the new display rack. So if you see me using it throughout my video and I show it a lot, there's good reason. I really hope you go check it out, maybe buy some. If you don't need them, tell your friends to go check it out because um, this is gonna save, I got different colors, blue, red, but it's gonna save a lot of problems. Right now I got big automotive car companies talking to us because they have so many wires that chafe and wear that then they get shorts and electrical and things because a zip tie is tough, it's sharp, it's got a hard edge, and with vibration it wears through, it cuts wires, it slides bars, so there's a lot of cool features about it. There's my shameless plug, I hope. You don't mind it. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Check it out, griplockties.com, and uh, wish us luck on this new product. We're gonna push it hard. Back to work. All right, guys, finished up getting the aluminum trim. I took some two by two by eight inch wall angle, iron angle aluminum, and I duct taped it to this flat sheet of aluminum. I've got three straps on it. I hope it'll be enough and I'm gonna slowly ratchet each strap and get that to bend. Wow. Boy, it doesn't get much better than this. Well, I tell you what, that is perfect. So this is what I was hoping would happen, is it would stay high and then transition to perfectly flat where the window is gonna mold onto it. I've got this nice roll in the middle. Got one little crease Right here, this is the high point of the angle braces I added to keep the front of the plane from moving side to side. So uh, looks like I'm gonna need to do a little bit of body work right through here. 
right through there. But all of this is absolutely perfect. So I'm gonna tighten this down just a little bit more, make sure everything looks good. Then I'll tape it down, fold these off, start some body work up top, and then build the whole tail. Perfect. <laughs> I call that success. All right, moment of truth. The aluminum, I compressed extra far down, so the, the arc is actually coming over and rounding out like this from the pressure I put on to get the edges to line up where I want. I'm gonna pop the straps off and that double arc should come out and it should be a more rounded arc and then a straight edge down the side. So let's undo it and see if it holds. We just taped with clear tape from the aluminum here down onto the carbon fiber here. So when I release this pressure, it should pop up and even out that transition. <laughs> that is perfect. Man, I love it when it works that good. All right, guys. Project for today. I want to build the mold for the back of the plane. So I'm just going to tack weld this bar in place right now. I've riveted it. Just put a rivet up here to tie it to this temporary aluminum cap we've got done. And then I just bent this over a bush wheel tire from Airframes Alaska which I'm wearing their jacket today. So um, I've got this temporarily bent. I'm just gonna spot tack that. This bar doesn't need to be here once the carbon fiber is done. Matter of fact, there's a couple bars in the airframe that I was able to take out because of the carbon fiber. They're not any of the primary components, but they're secondaries. And with a carbon fiber skin and wrap, it wasn't needed. So I went ahead and yanked that weight out. This will be another one of them. This I'm gonna use so that as I foam through here, I'm gonna build a metal frame, aluminum frame around here, foam through here, hand shape it. I've got a guide to follow to. Once I wrap this all with carbon fiber, one part from the back all the way to the front, this won't need to be here. As this carbon comes down, rounds around and attaches here, if I grab that point, I can push the plane around. It's not gonna move. So on a cub, this area, from here to here, if it's wrapped in fabric, these sides are perfectly flat and it works great. However, if you can actually put a little bit of a curve to it, the air flows better, especially as it gets bigger, like I did on the back of this vertical. This is almost twice as tall a vertical area. And so you're better off to have the air come on the front, round out a little bit and come back in. So the air is always moving and it will stay laminar better. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna it widen out this middle and I'm gonna arc the aluminum to make that shape. The other thing it does is if I take that shape and I arc it out and come back in and I tie it into here and take it up to the top of the vertical, once I've done that, I've actually made a beam out of the skin. So when I grab the top of this vertical, you can't flex it. If it were flat, you could kind of bend it. As it, as it comes around like this, then that middle section isn't able to bend. You've made a, a structural rounded shape. So this is gonna make a really solid vertical. Plus I'm bleeding it in. I got this kind of look off of Draco. Draco had a fairing that bled way up. Kind of wanted to copy that look a little bit. So now I'm gonna carry that vertical coming all the way up the tail. This cub is gonna be locked on a rail like no other cub. This should, in every sense, be one of the most stable cubs at any kind of speed, low and fast. So we'll find out when we test fly it. Back to work. Hi, all right. So it's going really, really well. And it's going so well, I might change how I was gonna do it a little bit, but this has the exact shape I want. I've got this curve, and this curve isn't actually parallel to the back. If you were to look at it close, you'd see that it goes from about midpoint and then moves up to the average of this area here. So you want that round to kind of carry the blend of the narrow to the wide. And the shape turned out perfect. I was able to blend right down to the original fuselage and uh, then round it in. This area, however, needs to be corrected. And so now that this is done and this is done, I'm either gonna foam this or put metal. I'm gonna first try metal and then maybe Bondo um, if the metal doesn't kind of lay out exactly the way I really want this to shape, 
Then I'm going to put a big box around it, foam it, and hand shape this bleed. This is a critical area, and um, I really want to make sure I get that airflow right. So I don't know. It might be foam, might be metal. We'll try metal first. So back to work. All right, guys, we're getting close. Um, both sides are done. The bleed in is working out great. I thought I was going to use foam, but I'm not. I'm going to be able to finish filling this in with metal. The curvature won't be right, but it'll give me a place to then work all the Bondo to blend all these radiuses together. So I'll put metal, and then it's body work, and then carbon fiber. So back to work. All right, guys, starting to do bondo work. It came out really good. I didn't need any foam. Got it all done in metal. I'm going to start shaping up the top. There's a couple kinks in the metal up top. The middle was perfect. I got about an eighth inch low right there, so I'm going to have to fill this whole thing. This needs a lot. I got a huge valley here I don't like, so we're just going to make a big mess. Clean it. I'm adding this to the one-time mold. It, it, is, it is so good, I can live with it just like that, but not quite. <laughs> There's just the slightest imperfections um, in here that I want to get perfect. And because I got tape in these corners, the bondo is going to want to not stick to here, the corner, and this edge. So because I want to lay bondo over this whole thing and really shake this out and get it absolutely perfect for my mold, I got this really thin layer of fiberglass. We're going to stick it on, and then that will give the Bondo something to stick to. So this will stick really well over everything. And uh, once this is on, the Bondo will stick to this fiberglass perfectly. And then I can kind of work it and shape it, and I don't have to worry about sanding bondo and having it pop off the clear tape because this is underneath so it's another couple hours step and some dry time but it's going to be work really well you can see this fiberglass is really thin it's just enough to give me something to make contact to with the body work on the mold all right guys <laughs> i'm so excited it's a weekend no work i got two days where i can put in 18 20 hours a day and we are gonna knock this out. So um, this is now done, we did this late last night. All the metal's on, I got the fiberglass is all dried up on it so I can do the body work. All these little pieces all in here used to be the big part we pulled off the belly. I, I joke about throwing this all in the trash, but it's the work I throw in the trash really. But the metal, I always cut it all up. The parts that have Bondo stuck on it, yeah, we throw it in the dumpster, but I reused everything. We grew up really poor in our, our family, a lot of love, so rich as anyone could ever be. And, uh, but we didn't have any money, so we saved everything. And so all these parts are actually scraps off the belly parts, and they'll keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller until we can't use them anymore. So I don't chuck anything, but we got our scrap parts reapplied here, fiberglass is on and I want you guys to know I received thousands of comments I can't read them all but we try my wife will come down and sometimes sit by me and read through them and try and reply and she'll type whatever I need her to reply and I love her for that so I try and get to your comments today I'm gonna try something really cool so I'm always using Bondo because it's cheap 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 to do body work like on the top one of the comments was someone said you should try this product I haven't tried it, probably should have. It's just more money and I'm a really frugal guy. It may not seem like I'm frugal, but <laughs> my shoes always go till they're almost no tread on the bottom. Um, probably because when I was growing up, we, uh, <laughs> my mom would wear our shoes and hand them down until there was no rubber left and she'd put cardboard inserts with duct tape inside so that where there was rubber was missing, the cardboard and duct tape would keep our socks from getting ruined. So. I, I, I'm always wearing grubby clothes and I wear them till they're gone, but I'm frugal, despite the fact that I spend a lot of money on carbon and my passions, but, but I love all your comments. I like to read them, um, get tips. Sometimes I get tips 
don't work out so good and then I get others that are awesome. I think this is gonna work. Thank you. Please keep them coming if you have thoughts, ideas, and all of you that send comments that you love the videos and this crazy guy, Mike, and what we do here with airplanes, thank you. They make my night. Um, sometimes I get home at two and three in the morning after working here and to just slow the brain, which doesn't happen a lot with me, <laughs> a little bit hyper. I'll read through those comments and uh, they make my day. So appreciate you guys. Love you. Back to work. Well, I, I can tell you right now, I already like it. It is so lightweight. I can just tell by mixing it. And that's going to be a reference to its density. So I'm sure this guy's right. This is going to sand really nice. So spend a little more money, get away from my 13 year old days when I needed to save 50 cents on a gallon of Bondo. We're going to try something new. I may be old, but you can teach this dog new tricks. <laughs> Wow, that spreads really nice, really nice. Alright guys, uh, <laughs> so I'm losing my breath, but I love to break up body work. Um, always be standing on one and go and start as fast as you can while you got Bondo drying and then move back and forth. Um, that way you never stop. Sand, put up more Bondo. Back, forth, back, forth, you never have to stop. By the time you can't breathe, <laughs> the Bondo's dry. Back to work. <laughs> All right guys, so that was my first layer. I got it knocked down. I got a couple little low spots. Um, but right now, I wanna show you what I've done. This hard line you see right here, won't be here, it's gonna be rounded. But when I first started doing body work a long time ago and I had lots of curves on my planes like 20 years ago. I try and shape it all at once. And now I do it the easy way. The body work guys know this, maybe this will help someone else. But I like to find anything on a one plane and knock it out and then as I come down, it makes a hard line. And then this plane, I can knock it out and make a hard line and then I can, it's easier to get this one perfect and this one perfect, then come back in and add the big radius with it. Really happy with how it's coming. If you look down this edge right here, you can see the curve is perfect. The blend is perfect. So a little more body work, a lot more sanding. Their side still to do, back to work. One more thing for the comment from Too Fast Harley. Gave me the tip on this other brand. I'm telling you what, thank you. Uh, probably sands two to three times easier. And I did a test. I did a couple of layers, eighth inch, quarter inch, and just laid it out and let it dry. And then I did some flex tests, flex to break test at different thicknesses and compared it to Bondo. I wanted to know, one, if it sanded easier, was it gonna be less strong? Not that it matters for a mold. I don't care. All of this is a one-time part and it all comes off the plane. But I did thin, thick, really thick. And then I did flex test on them, flex testing on them. For sure, that product, it has more flex before it cracks. Two to three times easier to sand. I'll probably never go back to Bondo unless the shop I got that out is closed up. I can go to a 24 hour auto zone, auto parts store and grab it. So. Thank you for the tip. I'm gonna be using it all the time. Back to work. All right guys, I've got this blocked down. I got just a couple touch up spots I've circled. 
these two black lines is my reference lines of where I need the spreader to be. Once you start getting an arc on here, it's hard to tell where the hard line is so that your curve doesn't kind of go up and down. So I put that on and you can see if I bend this, now I can kind of chase those black lines and get the radius I want and not only have the radius, but have the radius stay correct until right here, I'll let it fan wider and thicker and then go out to a flat. So I've got that ready. At the same time, I'll knock these couple of spots. I've got a few more on that side, but let's mix up some more Z grip. Back to work. All right, it's going really good. And uh, it's actually going faster than I thought. I don't think we'll be here 20 hours. I think maybe 18 at tops will be sometime in the morning. <laughs> we'll be done, but we're going to stay until this thing is all carbon fibered. So we're going to finish masking off the bottom. We got company for a while still. Mark and Jason are over there working on their planes, which is awesome. Deception. There they are. <laughs> Woo! <-hoo! laughs> Deception and ambush underway. Two six cylinder, 300. 20 horsepower race engines put them out there from Lycoming. So that's awesome. Um, but we're gonna get this masked off, waxed up, and uh, lay some carbon. So, <laughs> back to work. <laughs> All right, we've got a couple layers on. But it's getting cold in here because we need it to go slow. But it's looking good. It's been a long day, but gone, it has gone really well. All the carbon fibers on. I've got to put the peel fly on. But you know what? It went amazing. And I also still have Mark and Jason hanging out. Flip around, look over there. <laughs> hey everybody! <laughs> so those guys are kicking butt and uh, getting these planes done. So I can't wait to get these finished and go fly. So I don't know, a couple more months of work to do at least, but back to work. Well, it was a very long day. It got went faster than I thought and then went several hours longer than I thought at the end. But it's done. And if you look at that door right there up at those windows, See, it's still pitch black. <laughs> the sun has not come up. So we beat the sunrise. We still got another day in this weekend. So we're gonna go get some rest, come back in a few hours, get back to work. All right, guys, I got a good four hour sleep, maybe even four and a half. And we got another full day ahead of us. My favorite part, take a look at this. Woo! <laughs> That's a way to make my day. We got to trim off this lower side, but wow, that turned out really nice. Something oddly satisfying about this. The back I've got tucked in tight. So I'm going to trim this edge off all the way down the side here. Wow, that really came out nice. Um, all the way down the side here, I'll mark a line, I'll trim this down about two inches, and then I'll put the nut plates in. The nut plates, I'm going to weld the weld tab to the tube frame, and I'll have them all the way down the tube frame. I'll put nut plates on those, then I'll put a rubber isolator uh, film between the nut plate and the carbon fiber so I don't get any corrosion issues, and then uh, I'll be able to bolt from this part that overlaps the part below it through both at the same time and into a nut plate. So I'll put those all the way throughout the whole airframe. So I will be actually tying this carbon fiber, bolting it throughout the entire airframe. I'm excited. It's going to take a couple hours to get this popped off. 
trimmed out and put back on and then I'll start marking out holes and getting ready. But man, that is awesome. <laughs> I'm happy, this is a good way to start a day. Let's get to work. This right here, all this thin stuff that's only one layer thick, comes up to two, three, four. I'm, I'm trimming down only two inches right here. So all this ugly stuff comes off, but <laughs> the rest is perfect. All right, guys, all that work for a one-time part. <laughs> Worth it. I don't know what it weighs. Oh, wait. <laughs> That's perfect. Check this out. You can see I've got this all paired up, sanded. This gives me room to drop the bolts for the rudder. The third rudder attach points down on the belly. So we got three now. Then I left this come around and bleed out a little bit, kind of to close the gap. A little bit of an air gap seal, but getting closer every day. Back to work. This is all sanded out and trimmed, ready to go on, so give it a fit. Good. End up there somewhere. <laughs> Done! Success! A little more sanding and some, I don't know, we'll figure out what we'll do with colors later, but so far, I'm loving the look. Let's get back to work. All right, guys, I've drilled all the connection points on the top bar. Every one of these marks you see, I'll also do them on the bottom and also on the cross braces. Now, what works out really, really well when I built the mold for the top and for the side, I used 035 aluminum. That 035 actually made the carbon part now has a gap between the metal tube I was up against and the carbon is the thickness of the aluminum I took out. It's perfect because I need to isolate the carbon fiber away from any chromoly steel and especially when I isolate carbon fiber away from aluminum because it has a galvanic corrosion problem. So what's great is the isolator, you can get an 035 thickness and that's perfect. So when I actually put beyond this point right here, I'm actually gonna be putting a bolt through here, through the lower section into a angled chromoly bracket that has a nut plate and I'll bolt it through all three at once with the isolator holding it apart. That will keep the shape perfect and prevent any corrosion. The other thing I'm going to do is now that the top of this is actually up through this spine, I did almost 14 layers of carbon through here, and then it bled down to just much thinner through here so that I could make this part of the structure that holds the tail, including up and over the top here. What that allows me to do is take away some of the metal. There are certain places I had to reinforce metal for this engine and for the twist. Carbon fiber took care of a lot. There are a couple places I get to take it out, so I get to save weight. One of those will be in this shell section. The thing I'm gonna do right now, is I'm gonna pop this off. Set it right here for a second. And right here, I don't need this part of the frame anymore. But I do want to keep this bar from bending and flexing right here. I've got a bigger tail section. The carbon fiber, just putting the nut plates in, I couldn't even move it. It just bent, moves the whole plane. But I'm going to still strengthen it by taking two bars from the strongest part of my airframe, which is right here where I made all the reinforcement to hold the shock for the suspension. I'll come up here, two bars on an angle, coming up to a point. I'll web it out, and I'll take this front section off. I really wanted to get this locked in so that it can't move. There's no twist, and then I can tie in the wires or airfoil tubes that will go down to my horizontal and keep those from moving when I put full power to that prop. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and put the bracing in, cut this off, put in a bunch of weld tabs. Got a lot of work to do, so let's get back at it.
<laughs> All right, guys. So I have a lot of people ask how we get scrappy built and get things done so quick. Well, it's very simple. <laughs> I'm a workaholic. <laughs> I am. But I have a day job, and I do work a lot. I'm an average 10, 12-hour day guy, and I love it. I've always been that way. I like to go home, have dinner with my family, which I did. We went out to eat, and I am now here to work. Um, I've already got a couple projects out of the way, and it's only, there you go, 9 p.m. at night on, let me see that, January 14th, start of a new year, two weeks in. So, 9 o'clock at night, I've got a couple projects out of the way, it's a work day, and I'm just getting started. I do want to get home early tonight, I got an early start for work tomorrow. My wife wants me home early, so I am going to hurry and just make a mold and call it an early night. Got stuff done. Nine o'clock, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to make a part, go as fast as I can so I can get home to my family. It's going to look like this. Hope this is making sense. There we go. This is going to be a carbon fiber box. It has oil lines, cable pass-throughs, wire looms, and it's gonna be six feet long. So what I've got in the belly pod is scrappy. I've got a permanent belly pod inside the upper deck lid. It's all sealed up. I have all my cables, rudder, oil lines, um, electrical, everything's up in the top. So I don't want anything to touch that. So I'm gonna just build a real simple carbon fiber double L return box that screws to the lid that protects everything. That way when I'm hauling all my camping gear, throwing in a snowboard, skis, whatever it is, I can stuff sleeping bags, whatever I push in there, I have no, no risk of touching anything, wiring or cabling. So I'm gonna quickly make this part and get home early tonight. It's nine o'clock, I'm gonna make it out of this particle board, it's inch and a half thick, so I'm gonna rip up two sheets on the, the table saw. I wanna round the edges right here. Wrap it in some clear tape because I don't want to wait for uh, release to dry on so many layers and I want to try and get this done and get home early. So uh, I'm going to knock this out and see how fast I can get home tonight. So back to work. All right, guys. Let me get my depth set. Do a quick test. All right, I only need to round this edge. So this is gonna be the box. Carbon will come down, go over the sides. Let's get some uh, tape on it and start apart. It's like wrapping a Christmas present and using only tape. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Wrap it up like a present. Okay. All right, let's see how we're doing. So far, so good. Way faster than using a wax. 914. <laughs> All right, about to work. So I always keep aluminum sheets around. I don't know how many parts I've made on this. It just gives me something to lay the carbon to, a nice clean edge. So my part is actually that up the side, a nice rounded corner, flat down and over. Then when I flip it over and attach it to the inside of the plane, this flat edge will get trimmed back just about a half inch, but it gives me an edge to put the screws to attach it. So it's completely sealed. So it's about the easiest mold I can make. So it's going faster than normal molds, but I need to get home. So this is a perfect mold to do before I race home. Back to work. There right, guys. So what I'm doing here is one, a nice clean edge. So I'm putting this duct tape right at the edge of the round. And then when I push it down, it gives me this radius I want on the bottom of the part. So now I got a quarter radius here and a quarter radius here, and this won't move. So I'll work my way down. Now make the, the round I want on this side of the part. All right, 
A B mix. About 15 pumps here. I'm gonna need several of these. It goes fast. as simple as that make the part a little bit big I'll finish pulling this off I'll pull it tight and I'll show you what time it is and we'll keep going now this is works good because I can tuck right down into that Tape. You can see how nice these corners are working out. And all I had to do was 60 seconds of routering and a teeny bit of tape, and I got two perfect radius edges for my gunnel. Gunnel, track, protector, I don't know, call whatever you want. <laughs> Next layer. All right guys, I got two more. I need to do it 16 inches. So I'm just gonna chase my tape. Next. All right guys, so I only need three layers for this one. And I'll show you where we're at so far. I'm gonna get home before my wife's asleep. If you wonder why I'm always winded, every time I'm talking, I'm trying not to. All right, here we go. 9.35, I've been out at 37, 38 minutes. I still got a peel ply, foam, and bag, vacuum. We'll be out of here, back to work. All right, so this is now the foam. This is what allows the vacuum, the air, allows the air to get sucked out of all the areas because it, the air can get into the foam and travel to the vacuum. So it also allows the resin to come through the peel ply into the foam and kind of uh, strip it off. So this works great. There's a reason I folded this up at the end Wherever the vacuum source is, you don't want to have it right on the part. It'll make the circle shape in it. The other thing that's even more critical is that if it's right on the part, you could suck, probably not on a three layer, but a six or seven layer, you can actually suck enough resin up to kind of plug the vacuum source. So what I've done here is I folded several layers of just the scrap off the end into a pad. I put it on it. It gives me lots of foam for room if there was a lot of resin to not get up and plug the hole and then the air get pulled through all this foam to this end. So all I have left is a bag, taper to this, turn a vacuum on, let's go back to work. All right, so right now, I just need to stop the air from getting out. So 
I just tape this bag right down to the aluminum. Now on a lot of parts, you gotta actually take the bag and put it all the way around the part, suck it from all directions if it has a lot of shape to it. This is as easy as it gets. So we're showing you making a part one-on-one. -on -one. It might be six foot long. This is, this is pretty simple. Right here, I'm just cutting the hole through where I pass through. All right, I'll try and set the camera on, what do you call it? We'll do it so we can fast forward it. Still frame, whatever it is, let's turn this pump on. All right guys, we're officially done, I can go home. So I'm gonna let this run. I can plug this cord into a timer. Let it go for a couple hours, it'll shut itself off. I'm gonna go home. Let's see what time it is. 9.53, January 14th. I don't know if you can see that. All right guys, so we're done. And uh, I'm pretty happy about it. Filming added a few minutes to it, but because I was filming, I tried to hustle a little bit more, maybe. <laughs> anyway, we got it done. I'm gonna go home, start to finish, mold, part, complete, under one hour. We'll get at it tomorrow after work. Good night. <laughs> All right, guys, there's the part. It is done, lightweight, this will go up inside the belly pod to the ceiling and anything floating around back there <laughs> shouldn't be anything floating down I, I got uh tie down straps back there for a little bungee covers but if it did or i stuffed it in tight with sink bags nothing's gonna hit that so extremely lightweight perfect the one hour part <laughs> i gotta trim it fit it it's gonna take me another 15 minutes to do that so Installed in the airplane, hour 15, hour and a half max. So back to work. All right, guys. So here's the part we made in an hour. Went fast, and uh, now the time. That, where do you spend all the time? Uh, all these lines, blue tape, yellow tape, makes it real easy to see where to cut. I laid this up under the belly of the plane inside the luggage compartment or belly pod, the permanent belly pod, held it up against all the bars, and then I laid out every angled bar. The reason for that, and then I marked everything, I got out my calipers and I marked the radius of all the different diameter pipes so that I could punch each hole, whatever diameter it needs to be, in the sides of this and then cut a slot out of it. I don't know if that's making sense, but there's a bar coming through the underside lid of the belly pod inside and that bar is coming out this needs to go up and I want the bar to sit here so that this edge is tight against the bottom of my floor that way if I have that rounded the diameter of the pipe and that slotted this can go inside the belly pod seat completely tight and be bolted from the top down and then there's nothing that can sneak through any hole or gap anywhere to get into my control cables, oil lines, electrical. So this is it. Let's drill a bunch of holes, sand it out, fit it, trim it, put it in the plane. I bet this is gonna be start, to, I'm already in it 45 minutes plus. So I bet it's a two hour project to get it fitted. So an hour to make it, <laughs> two hours to install it. Let's get to work. Okay guys, I just finished welding up the frame inside here. I got rid of this. It was about a 50% reduction if I minused out this and then added in the new brace that is set up for a carbon fiber tail. But if I grab right here and try and bend it down, the only thing that happens is the whole plane moves. I can't get any deflection, almost no deflection. I mean, the slightest amount, but 
I'm gonna end up putting a strain gauge on here when I get the front end done. I'll bolt the front end down, I'll put a block against here, and I'll come up to the attach point that goes out and holds up the horizontal, and I'll pull on it and see how many pounds of force it takes to get this frame to twist. And uh, it's gonna be awesome, but that's gone. Now, if you wanna see what we started with, of course, Scrappy is, despite all the carbon fiber, is still almost all scraps. The engine was off, uh, is a used motor off my race plane. The frame, it's an awesome frame, Carbon Cub EX frame and another Cub frame that got wrecked and I've morphed them together. So I've got two frames making this uh, used engine and all the control surfaces are parts I took from two frames and welded up my own. So this is the new tail section, but this will give you a good idea if I line up the bottom hinge point right there. This gives you an idea of how much more, how much more vertical we have in this. This plane should be on a rail in the bumps, not have it moving back and forth like a lot of aircraft do. So I've got a lot of vertical stability. And then you can see not only is it 15 inches higher, but look how much more we added at the back. Not by going any longer, but because we added all the width in the middle, the 15 inches in here, we added it to the thickest, meatiest part of the rudder. So I'm gonna have unbelievable rudder control. But I thought you'd like to see before and after tail section. Can't wait to go test fly it. <laughs> Let's get back to work.